Sure. Um, you know, happy with the way our team responded. As I said, uh, after the game Saturday, it was a good team win for us uh, with all three phases contributing to the win. Um, you know, I like the way our team responded. Obviously, coming off of two, uh, two tough losses the previous couple of weeks, it was good to be able to reward our guys for the hard work that they put in. Um, you know, it doesn't matter who you play in the Big Ten. Um, to get a road win is always a good thing. And uh, going up to Rutgers and being able to come away with the win on the road uh, was good for our team. And now uh, we have the challenge of going on the road again to play a, a, a Purdue team that, much like us, has been battling injuries, but they continue to play really, really hard. And so, again, we expect to get their best today, uh, get their best this week. Uh, and we're looking forward to the challenge. Um, you know, Piggy will, will be our starting quarterback. Josh is on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, we, we can't rule him out just yet. He has a uh, mid-foot high ankle, which uh, it basically will be based off of how he feels. So uh, going into this game, we expect Piggy to be our starter. Um, if Josh is available, this could change as we get closer to game time. Um, but with that, you know, the battle between those two in summer camp, was a, a close battle and we've got a lot of confidence in both those guys. We've got a lot of confidence in Piggy and his ability to come in and uh, perform and run our offense. Um, his teammates have confidence in him and I know as a coaching staff we do. Um, and then lastly, you know, our game captains for this week will be, uh, will be Shaq, uh, Ellis McKinney, and Keron Howard. They will serve as our game captains for the Purdue game. And with that, I'll open it up. The Jacklin's Law Group's successes have resulted in many distinguished awards, including Best Personal Injury Trial Law Firm USA, Maryland's Personal Injury Attorney of the Year twice, and Super Lawyers designation every single year. We succeed because we're willing to try cases, and insurance companies know it. That's why their claim reps often grumble they pay us more in settlements than any other lawyers. You deserve a great lawyer. If you've been hurt in a car, truck, or train crash, call 855-BIG-DOG-1. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerfourgates.com. Yeah, Coach, when you make a kind of a quarterback switch, uh, the other, everything stays the same, or do you adjust those calls for time for Piggy because he has different assets to his game versus Josh? Well, yeah, uh, obviously you will definitely call the game for what your strengths of your quarterbacks are. I think both those guys' strengths are very similar. I think Piggy does add a, a different element because of his ability to make plays with his feet, but the way our system operates, whether it's the RPO system, whether it's the zone read stuff that we can do with both those guys, uh, we have a, a similar menu of plays that we call for both. I think with Piggy, he adds uh, the element of in the passing game when things break down, uh, you probably won't see him take as many sacks because of his ability um, to, to take off with the ball if it is a passing situation, but I don't see us having to be different with how we call it in terms of the schemes we use, but we'll call it toward the strengths of whichever quarterback plays for us. Coach, uh, the last, uh, every Saturday you're looking to make, uh, you're looking to progress and things of those lines. Uh, last Saturday, what sort of winning plays, what sort of winning moments can you really take away as you guys move forward and build upon? Well, I, mean, I think the big thing is, is when you look at across the board and you start seeing a bunch of freshmen playing for us. You know, we started a redshirt freshman tackle and Spencer Anderson, uh, redshirt guard, and Austin Fontaine, uh, DeAndre Banks played a ton of plays for us. Levante Gator played a ton of plays for us last week. So uh, the development of our experience um, in a game like last week is something that I think will benefit us down the road. Um, you know, with the injuries we've had up front, losing three starters, uh, with our center in the right side of our line, seeing those other guys come in, Austin and Spencer, uh, and then Ellis be able to go inside and play center. The way they took the adjustments, because as you, you know, when we went into this game, uh, who we saw Rutgers to be on film was not necessarily with who, how they played. And so with the young offensive line, I was pleased with how they took some of the adjustments we had to make on the fly. And so um, you know, those are some of the things I thought we tackled better um, in this game 
compared to the previous game. And again, you know, those are the things that you do. We didn't turn it over. We didn't beat ourselves. I still think the penalty bug was a little heavier than I'd like it to be. Um, we had a few more, you know, we're less than what we've had the last two games, but still too many penalties, which are unforced errors. And we'll continue to work to clean that up. Um, in, ter in terms of Piggy, what you saw of him in the second half, I know you said that you, you would have liked to have ended the game a little better. Uh, but in terms of him getting the ball out quickly, he seems that that seems to have been a, a big area um, where maybe maybe you, you were not as happy with Josh, you know, early in the season getting the ball out quick. Is is that something that that Pig brings to the offense in terms of maybe you know being as decisive as we've seen him? Yeah, you know, Josh is a really good decision maker, and so I thought the first few games of the year, Josh. <laughs> Uh, made fast decisions. Uh, obviously, as we took on some of the injuries up front, those things, uh, those affect your quarterback up front and, and how quickly and, and, you know, I thought, again, the discipline of, of keeping your eyes down the field on your reads and not necessarily looking at the rush uh, maybe affected Josh more than necessarily him being slow with uh, getting the ball out. But I think Piggy has a really good grasp of what we're asking him to do. Um, again, he brings a little different element in that uh, little twitcher as a, a guy back there as the throw of the ball come, does come out uh, a little quicker in terms of the release. But um, I thought both those guys, like I said, uh, they had a great battle this summer. I think Piggy's really improved uh, the area where he had his weakest strengths, which to me would have been throwing the football. And I, I've seen great improvement from Piggy being able to throw the ball. And we saw some of that, which uh, at the end of the game, which is kind of why we continue to call it that way because we had to get some meaningful reps and the experience of running our system, you know, throughout the course of the game, even though the game maybe had been a, a little more uh, in, the, in, the, in the bank, per se. When you've talked about how this offense has been more big little than you would like, what, what do you need to see execution-wise to kind of minimize the, the amount of little that you're seeing? I mean, just efficiency on first down, um, you know, early in the year. We were gaining four more on first down, staying on track, and that's the key to it. Um, you know, when you have negative plays or, or, or you don't gain yardage on first down, it puts you at a disadvantage with your second down calls sometimes. And then if you're inefficient there, then the third and longs are very, really hard to manage. And so um, for us, our first down efficiency needs to get back to where it was earlier in the year. And, and again, we can help that with somehow we call it. But uh, the execution up front, uh, blocking, perimeter, a lot of all those little things really show up on first down. So we just got to get a little better on first down. You know, Ace mentioned that a big thing he worked on um, in the offseason was improving, you know, his reads of offenses and just kind of the mental aspect of the game. What kind of work did you see him put in the offseason you know, to do that? Well, I think the big thing is knowing what your weaknesses are. And, you know, that's the way our program is set up, um, you know, at least two to three times a year. We meet with each player individually and we go over their strengths, their weaknesses, and things we want to see them improve on. So for us and, and Piggy was his ability to throw the football. We all know he has the ability to take the ball and, and run with it. Uh, and, and he's made a lot of plays around here doing that. But I think um, creating himself to be a little more versatile in terms of throwing the ball. He throws a great deep ball. I think some of the intermediate stuff is where I've seen the biggest improvement as well as just decision making in terms of uh, reading his keys and then the RPO stuff that we do, it's really important that your quarterback uh, is disciplined with his eyes and where his eyes are to, to be able to get the ball to the right spots. Right. Coach, can you talk about the development of your inside linebackers, specifically Ely and Campbell, and uh, their growth and what they've brought to the program so far? Yeah, you know, we feel like we've got three starters in there because you throw Isaiah Davis, who's played a lot of football, and he's a starter there next to Ace. And the way Chance Campbell has continued to come on, we feel good about it, that position. I mean, you know, you look at, you know, Chance and Ace, they both are really long, physical guys that can run inside out to the ball. We saw Ace and his ability uh, in the, the interception. He's forced to fumble, 12 tackles. He really played probably his best game thus far. And, uh, again, we've seen Chance make some plays for us as well. So the development of those two guys and knowing that they're young football players in our program uh, leads me to believe that we're in a pretty good position there at the inside linebacker position because of the way they are able to make plays.
Coach, with Rondell Moore being out with injuries still. Is so, he out? Well, he's still dealing with injuries. Yeah. Uh, who are some of the uh, Purdue playmakers that you know, catch your eye on film, and what are you looking for them to do on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, you know, number three, Bell, their receiver, is a big, long receiver that's made plays. They use number 33 a lot like we use a Jake Funk, uh, a real workman-like tough guy that they try to find ways to get in the ball. You know, obviously the quarterback, you know, they're well coached. You know, Coach Brom does a great job in developing quarterbacks. So, you know, I know they put an oar next to the quarterbacks, but I do know this, and, and you know, Brom worked for Coach Zook at Illinois, and we, we know we, the background of them that, that both whoever plays quarterback will be well coached for them on that side of the ball. So, you know, our key is obviously, much like us, they've got some injuries and things going on up front. And, and they haven't necessarily been able to run the ball as well as I know that Coach Brown would like to you study them. And they're, we, very, we are very similar in where we are on that side of the ball with the offensive line. So, again, it's going to come down to being able to handle the trenches, not allow them to get the running game going. But because of their ability to throw the ball, we've got to do a great job of uh, staying on, in coverage. Uh, we like to play man coverage. We like to pressure the quarterback. And, you know, one of the things when you watch them on tape that they do a really good job of are the back shoulder throws, which versus man coverage are one of the toughest throws to defend. So we've got to work our tails off this week to, def to defend the back shoulder throws that uh, obviously those quarterbacks being well coached have the ability to make. Uh, I wasn't here at, right at the start. Is, is Jackson, is Josh the only injury from Saturday? Yeah, but, and, and Josh is day to day. I mean, okay. he, because, you know, we've done all the research in terms of he's had MRIs, he's had x rays, and it's basically a midfoot and high ankle. So it's just a matter of how quickly the thing can calm down for him and, and see where he is. So he'll be a day to day guy, which allows, obviously, Piggy to, to be the guy that takes the snaps with the ones for us. And uh, we'll. we'll Find out more, or more or less as we move uh, and, further to the. And weekend. Tyler DeSue would be the. Tyler DeSue would be the backup. Yeah. And just follow up on injuries in terms of when you're trying to, you know, it, with a developmental program as you call this, how hard is it to 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 build confidence and build you know, what you want from a team, uh, especially when you have such key injuries on the offensive line, and and how do you, as a coach, you know, sort of approach every week. I know it's, you know, you talk about next man up, um, but when you have such young guys you know, who are the next man up, it, it may, may obviously makes it tough. It does, but that's why we get paid to coach, um, to find ways to create uh, opportunities for you to move the ball. You know, I've been around here for a lot of injuries where we've had to play with a linebacker and quarterback for seven games. So you get creative. Um, you know, our coaching staff does a good job of knowing what we can do well and identifying that. Um, again, it goes back to making sure that your best players are touching the ball as much as you can and, and you try to limit the exposure you give, the, the areas of weakness you have. So that's what the game planning is all about and we try to game plan around some of the youth and some of the injury things that we have going on and not ask those guys to do things that they're not capable of doing just yet. Um, it's hard to do, obviously, uh, you know, when you're playing good teams and you know, we were fortunate this weekend that we were able to, to make some adjustments and, and, you know, it was a tough game early versus Rutgers. And then once we made some of the adjustments to be able to run the ball and, and get Anthony off and, uh, you know, get him a few carries and big plays along with Javon Leak, I think that really helped us. And to me, our focus when we game plan is to find ways to get our best players the ball without necessarily putting our deficiencies or when we're young or inexperienced in, 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 in the way of, Putting them in bad bad positions. Two more, so we get to our players. Emma. Kind of going off that, but in college football, we've seen so many quarterbacks transfer uh, when they don't have playing time or aren't the starter. Um, for Piggy to say and, and for you to be in the spot you are now, how how important is it to you to develop that backup position and for him or whoever it is to buy into kind of what that role is? Yeah, I mean that's been one of the, the pleasant surprises and you know I've been fortunate to be a part of this and see you know the unselfishness that the backup quarterback has because um, you know those guys want the opportunity to play and unlike certain positions it's hard to play two at once but um, and I can't say that, that there are times where I know the backup quarterback and, and Piggy wouldn't be disappointed in not having opportunities but one of the things we've always tried to do was to prepare him mentally that you have to be ready when your opportunity comes and and you never know when that is. And that's where I think, you know, we've seen Piggy's mature, uh, maturation in terms of 
preparing as if he's going to play, preparing as if he's a starter, and not necessarily, you know, wallowing in that I'm the backup or looking at himself as a backup because, as I said, it was a really tight battle. And it came down to uh, guy, the guy that gave us the best chance to score points and take care of the football. And it, it was really close. And so we've prepared Piggy each week as if he's going to play. We've always had packages of things we wanted to do with him. And now uh, with Josh's injury, he'll have an opportunity to, to go play and, and hopefully take advantage of the opportunity that he'll have. Last one, Don. Given his experience, how, how vital is, is Antoine to this defense? as well as the fact that, um, what does it say about him that most, almost all of his tackles this year have been solo tackles as opposed to getting help from other people? Yeah, I, I, I also think that when you look at the tackles and when you see a safety lead in tackles, you kind of think, well, man, they're getting a lot of big plays, but a lot of his tackles take place around the line of scrimmage. And, you know, we utilize our playmakers, and I think Coach Hoke and the defensive staff have done a great job of, doing things that Antoine's capable of executing, and, and whether it's rushing the quarterback, whether it's dropping down in the box to be the extra defender, um, and because of his ability as a tackler, and he's an effort guy, uh, a lot of his effort, a lot of his tackles are from sideline to sideline, him chasing them all down. We've even put him in man coverage situations where he's done a really good job covering slots and tight ends, and um, I think it speaks volumes to his skill set. You know, when you look at him out of high school, he was a quarterback that always had his hand on the ball, and he's a guy that's always around the football force on defense, uh, has a great knowledge and understanding of what we're asking our defensive guys to do. And I think the biggest asset of him is his leadership. And, and he doesn't do it with a whole bunch of talking. He's not a guy that stands up in meetings and talks, but he plays hurt. He plays reckless with his body. I mean, he's banged up after every game, and he comes up and hasn't missed a day of practice yet. So. To me, that speaks volumes to the character that he has as well as the leadership. Thanks, Coach. All right.